Hello there, I'm Leo Wardoff for Kit Guru, and this uh, small form factor PC, or what looks like a small form factor PC, is in fact a NAS. It's a Power NAS business mini system. Uh, Power NAS is a brand of uh, server case, and they have three ranges of NAS. There's this business mini, they also have a thing called CMA, which is for home users and small business, and they also have a thing called free NAS, which is a NAS you configure yourself. Business Mini comes with drives installed and comes with Windows Server 2012. Um, now, I don't really get along particularly well with, with Windows Server 2012, but that's because I am not a Windows administrator. I use Windows and when it comes to NAS, I want it to be quick, simple and to sit in the corner of the office and just do backups or whatever it is I want to do and I want it to be available to me. Uh, Windows Server 2012, on the other hand, is for people who run, you know, business. They've got many, many, many users. They want to be able to administer file shares and change permissions and do all sorts of stuff, all the sorts of things that we home users don't do. So Business Mini, uh, Windows Server 2012, this is the desktop that these administrators uh, know and love. Now, as it happens, uh, the best way I can sum up uh, Windows Server 2012 from my point of view is I'm actually running this over a VGA connection. Whoops, catch the power cable. Um, because uh, this NAS has three outputs on the back. It has VGA, DisplayPort and HDMI. And when you connect over HDMI, the display scaling goes all to pieces. Uh, all the icons go off the edge. You can't see the taskbar. And that's because the system runs on uh, an Intel uh, J1900 Celeron, which is actually a form of Baytrail uh, Atom um, quad-core processor. And Intel doesn't have Windows Server 2012 graphics drivers for that particular processor. It probably never occurred to them that someone would try and run essentially a server of sorts on Baytrail. Uh, but here we are. So there's this kind of little gulf uh, between the two. VGA on the other hand, um, a connection I haven't used in I cannot remember how long. Been using DVI since the cows come home, these days a display port. Um, <clears throat> but here we are, VGA and there you go, that's a full HD display on VGA. Um, so that is the uh, dashboard that your administrator is going to know and love and this here is the long long list of tools that you can use to configure the thing, do PowerShell and all the other malarkey that these uh, administrators adore. Photos as ever on KitGuru. Um, alternatively you can click on the Windows icon and you can switch over to the more familiar uh, Windows desktop, which obviously in this instance is uh, it's got very few icons indeed. It so happens the recommended resolution for Windows Server 2012 desktop is actually not 1920 by 1080 as I have here. It's actually, uh, is it 10 by 8 or is it uh, 12 by 10? I think it was 12 by 10. Um, Oh, never mind. It doesn't matter. The point is much more a, a, a resolution from the arc. But of course, if you're only trying to display a handful of icons, why not? Also, you, um, if you recall back in the day, server administrators, they used to have some cruddy old blue 15 inch VGA uh, display in the server room, which they barely ever used because, of course, all the connections are done over network. And that in a way takes us to the heart of Windows Server 2012. This screen here and indeed that uh, other screen I showed you before. Uh, gone, gone, go back to it there, the dashboard, uh, your administrator will see, your users never see any of this stuff, all the users see when they're connected to one of these types of NAS running on Windows is when they open their uh, file tree, uh, they see some other drives, which is of course exactly how it's supposed to be, they've got their local drives, their uh, uh, remote uh, external drives if they're using any flash drives, that sort of thing, and other drive, book photos, company archives, the current issue of the magazine you're working on, the whatever the heck, some project. It's a drive that pops up that's carefully titled so you understand what the heck it is. You've got permission to change stuff or just to view stuff or you have complete control over it possibly. And that is what Windows is all about. This stuff is for the administrator. Right, let's just shut the system down. Uh, do you want to shut down planned, unplanned hardware maintenance? In other words, you know perfectly well that all this stuff is going to be going back to base to uh, Microsoft telling them what you're doing with their beloved copy of Windows. Right, there we go. So the chassis, um, it is uh, by a company called Ablecom, comes in this completely uh, neutral brown box. Uh, the motherboard inside is Super Micro, as I say, Windows Server 2012, and then four Hitachi Desk Star NAS drives. Um, 
So the configurations 4x1 terabyte, 2 terabyte, 3 terabyte, 4 terabyte, 5 terabyte, 6 terabyte. This is 4x4 4 4 terabyte. This is £845 plus VAT uh, if you're working with VAT, just over £1,000. Um, so entry level 4x1 terabyte, 575 plus VAT. Uh, top end 4x6 terabyte, 1072 plus VAT, just about £1,300. Let's just pull out the um, cord <clears throat> and disconnect the VGA cable and turn the thing around. So we've got a door on the front which uh, has a lock um, on those standard little uh, cylindrical key things. Uh, the door itself is perforated to flow air and behind it we've got the four drive caddies, a bunch of lights, power and reset uh, buttons, uh, two USB 2 and uh, that there that looks like it should be a button is in fact for the uh, lock. Uh, if I just slide out one of the drive caddies and you can see there we go it's not tool free the drive is screwed in place um, and those four drives go horizontally like so uh, all quite straightforward uh, I can't decide if it is a problem or not but the two USB ports here if I put a flash drive in I cannot then shut the uh, door of the NAS uh, at one level that's a pain, at another level that makes perfect sense because if I've got something plugged in there, I probably didn't mean to leave it in there, I probably meant to transfer stuff, so I want to plug it in temporarily, transfer whatever is on it off it, um, and then close up the NAS once again. On the back of the NAS we have uh, ventilation for a system fan, we've got there ventilation for the tiny 40mm fan on the internal power supply, power connector, uh, VGA as mentioned, 2 gigabit ethernet, uh, one USB 2, one USB 3, DisplayPort, HDMI. Um, the the fact is one that USB 3, uh, this is something I've, I've quibbled about with other NAS manufacturers in the past. I find it really surprising. Um, obviously in this instance, Power NAS is entirely beholden to the manufacturer of the motherboard, which is Supermicro. The motherboard is a Supermicro X10 SBA Mini ITX motherboard. Uh, so clearly the features are, are entirely down to Supermicro, but then again, um, they selected the motherboard. I, I don't understand this thing of there are four USB ports, three USB 2, one USB 3. The idea I have to make sure I plug in my whatever external drive or some such to that specific port there to get extra speed rather than the port just above it or the two on I, I don't I don't get that um, I can understand the thing of going to slower USB if you want compatibility with a mouse dongle mouse keyboard because sometimes the older ones work better because you don't have the extra chipset in the way but it, it seems a bit peculiar to me to have one USB 2 and one USB 3 next to each other anyway there we go uh, right four thumb screws to remove the top cover on this professional NAS they are thumb screws rather than screw screws because they uh, aren't too shocked at the concept might want to dive inside it at some point. It's like a little locking latch and I take away the cover. Entirely conventional thing slides away and there you have the innards. So your tiny uh, mini ITX motherboard at the bottom, the Baytrail processor uh, has got a passive cooler on it, it's a I believe 10 watts TDP so that's uh, that's absolutely fine um, you've then got uh, around here one memory slot and there's another unused memory slot in here again photos on kit guru and then around here we have the m.2 um, ssd which is uh, what stores the uh, os uh, so that is a 64 gigabyte uh, transcend ssd and four gigabytes of memory in that one slot there. Uh, one slot is free should you feel that you need more. Um, I have to say four gigabytes strikes me as entirely reasonable and uh, doubling up to eight gigabytes, you could do it, not necessarily less than four gigabytes, particularly Windows OS, questionable. Um, so the Celeron J1900 uh, turbos up to 2.42 gigahertz. Um, the point being is, even though it's Atom technology, so relatively limp and slow, it is quad-core. So you've got quad-core processor, Intel at that, driving Windows, 4 gigabytes DDR3. Um, it works well. Uh, the performance downloading files from the NAS, I was happy with. Uh, I was getting 89 megabits, megabits, megabytes. Uh, per second. I've written megabits, I meant megabytes. Um, which is absolutely fine. Uh, 
anything north of 40 is effectively fast. Once you get north of 80, you're good. Go north of 100 is blazingly rapid. And you're probably going to find other factors in the system, like the drive you're transferring to is going to come into the equation. 89 megabytes per second, absolutely fine. Uploading uh, large files, on the other hand, relatively slow, 46 megabytes per second. And uh, again, I'd like to see the speeds more around the 80. As far as I can see, that is down to those Hitachi drives. They appear to be relatively fast at reading, relatively slow at writing. Um, that's a sweeping statement you'll appreciate. Uh, smaller files, download speeds, very similar, something north of 70 megabytes per second, upload close to 60. Uh, we've seen in the past, once you get into small files, say uh, libraries of music and such like, sometimes the speed can absolutely drop down because the system's doing a whole load of overhead uh, with the transfer. You can see sometimes speeds as low as sort of 10 megabytes per second. Um, so 60 may not sound huge, it's perfectly adequate, download 70. It's the upload of large um, movie files in this instance. Uh, they're sort of three point something gigabytes each and I was uploading a bunch of them. Um, so upload speeds, writing speeds to the NAS, not brilliant, not certainly a problem. On the other hand, one thing uh, it is worth observing. So this is a Windows NAS. Uh, all you see is a drive on your desktop and you copy stuff to and from it and you have access to those folders and drives that uh, the administrator has decided you should be able to see. It has to be said that copying and pasting fast it, it couldn't be any easier. Uh, other NAS you are using their versions of Linux and such like, they do things like they zip up files together and they, they don't want you to upload libraries or folders or they want you to go into a folder and mark the whole lot and do that. In this instance, mark a folder with as many files in it as you like, bang, gone. It really is dead simple. Um, and that takes me back to something that uh, a guy from Thekus was saying to me when he was showing me that um, uh, W4000 NAS uh, a while back. And I said something like, oh, just show me the interface, the user interface. Um, and he sort of said, but it's Windows. I thought that's a very fair point because essentially it's a file tree. We're all familiar with it. You've got a desktop with some stuff on it. You've got a file tree. Um, now, you do get into the realms of if you want a nice cuddly home NAS that's going to do very specific things. Here's your music software. Here's your video software. Here's your photo software. This doesn't do that. It's Windows. It'll do anything you tell it to do. Or if you tell it to do nothing, it does nothing. Um, at a certain level, it's just a bunch of files on a drive or some drives. <clears throat> and in a way, and I'm going back to basics here, you can sum it up by uh, when you first stick, well, it, you're, it arrives with drives in it and you turn it on, you get the user interface and you plug in and you tell it what to do and you're going to storage spaces. The name storage space for me pretty much sums up the whole approach to this thing, which is it's a space with some storage. It's up to you what you do with it. It's not movies and music and such like, it's storage space. And first and foremost, once you've created an array of some sort, uh, in this instance it's um, uh, RAID 5, uh, you enter the primordial pool and then within that you create a storage pool. Now it's primordial pool, you know, it's back before the world began, it's when there's just stuff. Uh, it, it's a little bit, it's a bit jokey actually. Um, it's also a bit, uh, a certain level silly, it's also not entirely helpful, but the point is it's some stuff do with it as you will. You create a storage pool, then you can you know, allocate uh, space to certain drives or virtual drives. You can then give permission to different people in the team. Uh, you can have access to this drive, but read only. <clears throat> you can't see that drive. You have full control over that drive over there. Uh, makes perfect sense. In this instance, the four by four terabyte drives, uh, it worked out to a pool space 14.6 terabytes. So that's the usual take off your formatting stuff. And then once the parity driver sorted itself out, it had 10.9 terabytes of storage. So one drive was completely devoted to a array integrity, three drives essentially uh, available. So Overall, the hardware is neat and tidy. That Mini ITX board down there does uh, exactly as you'd expect. You've got four SATA connectors, well actually you have six SATA connectors, two being unused, but four in use. And then these tiny little ribbon cables here feed away and they go to this uh, sort of IO panel here, which in turn converts to these uh, four drive base, uh, which is all lovely. Uh, at the back of the system, we've got this uh, case fan to draw air through, keep it all quiet. And as I said, the door at the front is perforated to allow air to flow. That's all fine. One aspect of this NAS that 
uh, frankly wound me up somewhat is the um, the FSP uh, internal power supply. It's a 250 watt unit, which is more than adequate to drive four drives in the Mini ITX board. As I said, it's a 10 watt CPU, but the little fan at the back, it howls away. It makes quite a racket. And that again takes us back to the sort of the heart and soul of what this, uh, uh, this NAS is all about. If you want it as a home NAS in your office, it's going to drive you bonkers because the software isn't very helpful and the sound of the thing, uh, it was certainly wind me up. On the other hand, if you've got the thing parked in the server room or behind a nice secure door along with a load of other sort of uh, rack mounted stuff um, and you're configuring it and accessing it over IP and you never even see the blooming thing, then the fact the thing's making a noise doesn't matter in the slightest. All that counts is that it's, uh, that it's working and it's reliable. The fact it's making a noise doesn't really matter. Now, I personally would be just as happy if it wasn't an internal 250 watt PSU, but instead was an external power brick, which of course is passively cooled. But then who wants an extra thing in their server room? So once again, we have this fork in expectations and, uh, and indeed what the customers want which is basically saying that this NAS is not my thing in the slightest, but for its intended market, no problem whatever. Uh, so that's covered all the basics. Uh, in fact, my notes here also mention that um, you can sort of tell the thing, look at the front, you don't even get an LCD display telling you what's going on. You do on the other hand get a whole bunch of LED telling you what's going on, activity and so on. But then again, if you're in a different room to the, dry, uh, to the NAS, what's the point of an LCD? You're never gonna see the blooming thing. So, at one level, you've got an Intel Atom powering Windows Server 2012. Graphics drivers are not that great. HDMI scaling is something of a joke. At another level, if you're connecting to the thing over IP, over Ethernet, none of that matters. Uh, it's doing exactly what you want it to do, and it works like a Trojan. Uh, in terms of pricing, a thousand odd pounds, including VAT, 845 plus the VAT. So over half of that is the drives, uh, Windows Server, Microsoft is what it is, and then the chassis is about 300 odd pounds, and of that, 100 pounds is the chassis, uh, 100 pounds is the motherboard, a bunch of it's gonna be the SSD. So none of it is uh, too painful or indeed too surprising. Uh, the only downside to it is that realistically, it's not for me, and it may well not be for you either. But if you are a Windows administrator, this to my mind is exactly the sort of NAS you should be buying. So this is Leo Water for Kit Guru, and this is the Power NAS Business Mini.